Hi folks, it's Evo here from Thunder Mist Lure Company. I'm out here with Claudio and Phil. We got a beautiful day upon us. We're in the eastern basin of Lake Erie, just on the other side of Buffalo. And uh, summer is upon us, and it's a perfect time to catch Mr. Smallmouth. So we're out here looking for bass today. We're gonna be using uh, crankbaits, and also gonna talk a little bit later about uh, bait casting reels. So stay tuned, we're in for an exciting show. You know folks, when summer hits, those bass have been feeding on bait fish all spring long. But when you when you want to run some crankbaits for the smallmouth in the summer, what you want to do is get yourself a short, stubby crankbait. Those longer, thinner crankbaits, uh, right now, this time of year, better for walleye. Uh, but when you're cranking, for smallies in the summer, those short, stubby baits get the nod. So what we're doing today, folks, we're working a flat. It's about uh, 8 to 10 feet deep, and all we're doing is drifting. And when you're drifting, what you want to do is cover as much water as possible. So Phil's working the back of the boat, and uh, I'm working kind of the front of the boat. So when we're casting, I'm casting basically to the middle of the boat and working this whole area to the front of the boat. And he's doing the same thing to the back, and Claudio's kind of working off the rear there. So we're covering a lot of water, and that's what you want to do when you're drifting over these flats. Uh, there's a lot of rock and rubble down here and there's also also some weed, a lot of weed and it's like a mossy weed. And what will happen is if this crankbait dives a little bit too deep, I'll end up picking up uh, some of that moss. So what I'm keeping in mind is the lower I point my rod tip, the deeper my crankbait's going to go. So if I find I'm picking up weeds, I'll just raise that tip up just a bit so that crankbait doesn't dive as deep. So keep that in mind. You can actually, depending on where you have your rod tip, control how deep that crankbait's gonna dive um, when you're casting. So right now, I can pretty much keep my rod tip right down here. And actually, that's where you want it because when you get a hit for hook setting, you wanna be able to come up on that fish. So this is the ideal position right here, as long as the depth allows you to get down there like so. You're on, eh, Phil? Fish on, Evil. Good one. Let me grab the net. Size to him? Oh, little guy. Oh, you can lift him in. Yeah. There you go. Nice. There's a good start to the day. My first start. Beautiful. Now you put on a purple crankbait, eh? Yeah, I changed it up about maybe five times. Okay. So I'm happy with this one right here. Nice. I'm going to need pliers. A needle nose? That's the thing with these treble hooks, you always want to make sure that you've got a set of needle nose handy because the saying I have is trebles are trouble. <laughs> but you got to have them. They're on these crankbaits and there you go. Oh, it's a little start to the day, but you know what? It's a start. Beautiful. Time to get in there. I see there's some nice... Uh, Nice rock cover here, eh, Phil? That's this where you came great. out of these rock and rubble, eh? This looks great, this spot right here. Yeah, we. it just came up to like six feet deep from 10 feet, and there's a lot of rock and rubble down here, so it looks like ideal. But maybe we'll get them a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger than that. There we go. Oh, oh. there we go. There's a jump, Phil. Nice. <laughs> Whoa, that was a good hit. We just bumped up here. We just dropped from that six feet zone to 11 feet. And there he hit. Oh, it's a nice bass. It's a good one, Phil. Beauty. Oh yeah, there he is there. Oh yeah, nice one. I think I will need the net for this one. Nice fish, there we go. Good fish. There's a crankbait bass right there, folks. If we can get him out of the net. Hooked up there a bit. I don't want to get a, a handful of trebles, that's for sure. But that's the beauty of this rubber net. These hooks are easier to, uh, easier to remove. There we go. That's a nice sized bass. Decent, uh, decent fish there, Mr. Smalley. Ah, about two, two and a half pounds. We'll get him back in. 
a nice little release here. Send him on his way, that was great. Now, another thing I want to mention to you folks, what I'm doing here with my cranking stick is basically I'm running a fiberglass rod is what I'm doing. And this fiberglass rod is very, very limber. It's what, uh, it's what I would call, it has a slow tip. And what that means is, with a slow tip, is that it bends from the tip to the butt. And uh, that has a lot of give for hook setting. When you're, when you're cranking, for, especially for bass, you want to make sure that, like right now I'm running, for example, I'm running monofilament line. I'm not running braid. In a case like this, I don't want to run braided line because the braided line um, it's too much of a direct hit. When I set the hook, I'll actually rip the hook right out of the fish's mouth with braid. So monofilament gets the nod when I'm cranking. And also a fiberglass rod, it's not as stiff as a, as a graphite rod, and it's got a lot of give to it. So I'll show you what I mean here with this rod. There's the bend to it. So although this is a medium heavy action rod, um, it's got a lot of bend and a lot of give and that's exactly what you want when you're cranking it's the perfect combination you know I did a little uh, I did a little study last year running a graphite rod with um, with braided line and when I did that I caught two out of ten fish that I landed As soon as I switched up to a fiberglass rod and monofilament line I landed every fish so Try it yourself sometime, you'll see. But not during a tournament, only when you're having fun. I got another one, Phil. Okay, it's great. He's dogging it here. He's dogging it. He's not as big as the one I just missed, but let's see if I can at least land this one. And I can. Oh, he's a little guy. I don't need the net. He's, he's up pretty good. Why is it the big ones always get away? There we go. That's all right. Nice little bass. Good hook set right in the lip there. And you know what? I'm going to need a needle nose. Okay. Get this guy out. Pop those hooks out just like that. Get Mr. Little Smallmouth back in there. All right. Let's go back after those big ones. Let's see if we can hook those big ones. One last thing folks, don't forget to subscribe to our videos by clicking on the button most likely found right over here as we have a lot more fish catching action coming your way. And if you haven't yet, be sure to check out our website at thundermissfishingtips.com as we have a lot more articles there and fish catching advice for you. So until next time, good luck and good fishing.